is I want to share with you one of the things I really, really enjoy about church is the atmosphere. You know, it's the atmosphere that's created. You know, you have worship, the word of God is going forth. People are preaching. There's an atmosphere of prayer. And really, it brings in the presence of God. You know, Psalm 22, verse 3 says that God, he inhabits the praises of his people. It says he inhabits the praises of Israel, meaning that there is a presence of God that is there when we are worshiping him. And we have come to give our time to him and to set the first part of our week to spending time in the presence of God. He shows up for that. And that's what we like to do with a live online. We want to bring the presence of God into your home. So whether you're listening through your AirPods, your iPhone speakers, your TV, whatever it is, we want the presence of God to be there with you. So that every time you tune in, you have that opportunity to spend time with God. And that's why we come together. That's why we do what we do. Because I like to even have this atmosphere at my home. You know, my wife and I, we're big on the the presence of God being with us, having that atmosphere continually in our house. And so we'll play the word all the time throughout the day, middle of the day, taking a break at night. We'll listen to all kinds of preachers. We'll go on to um, our, our YouTube for a live church and we'll play the lesson again and again. I encourage you to do that. You know, we'll have Alexa. We'll tell Alexa, play Maverick City music. We'll put it on our, our YouTube for our TV. But it's really just to build an atmosphere, an atmosphere of worship, an atmosphere where the presence of God can feel comfortable. And so, but that's important. Atmosphere is important because it affects you. It's like I hear people now, they don't say atmosphere, they say vibe. That's how they refer to it. They're like, well, what's the vibe? Like the vibe is like the, the energy or how you feel, what a room is like, what a room feels like. And everything that's happening in a space, it contributes to the atmosphere. You could say like it contributes to the vibe. Like everything you see, everything you feel, everything you hear, it all plays a part. So as I think about that, like think about your home, like what's the atmosphere? What's the vibe of your house? What are you picking up on? What what kind of atmosphere are you building when you step into your home or when you wake up in the morning? And so for my house right now, it's very clear. As soon as you walk in, in two seconds, you could tell there's a lot of kid vibes in my house. There's a lot of baby vibes. You know, there's kid toys all over the place. Everything's baby proof. So it's sitting up high. You know, my wife and I, we have, have twins, a boy and a girl, AJ and Ariana. There'll be two here in August. And so you can tell right away what the vibe of our house is. But I also believe that we have a a prayer vibe, like an atmosphere of prayer in our house. And I know that because I can see it in our kids. I can see that they've picked up on the atmosphere and it's starting to change what they do and change their words. You know, we pray over them continually. Uh, My wife, she prays with them before they eat to pray over their food. You know, every night before they go to bed, we, we pray, we lay hands on them, we pray over them that they would have sweet sleep, that God would bless their development, all of those things. When they're not feeling well, first thing we do before we grab any medicine, we pray over them first and, and pray that God would give the, he would give them healing, that God would show up in a mighty way. And so they've gotten real comfortable and familiar with the presence of God. And I know because they're starting to say amen. Like I said, they're sponges. They pick up on everything we say, everything we do. And so we'll be praying. And as we finish the prayer, they'll, they'll try to say that they'll go, amen. Like they won't fully pronounce it, but they'll try to get out an amen. And they pick that up because of the atmosphere that we have set in our home and starting to affect them and help them grow spiritually. But I got to ask you again, what's the vibe of your house? Like what kind of atmosphere are you building? What are you picking up on? Like it's almost, you ever cook something at home and then when you leave, your clothes smell like it all day? Almost like whatever's going on in your house, when you leave, you take it with you. And so like, what kind of atmosphere are you taking with you throughout the day? Because I feel like the pandemic for a lot of people, it affected their atmosphere. It affected the atmosphere of our home. You know, we were kind of locked up for a little while. We, we couldn't get out, couldn't go anywhere. We were forced to be around all these people that we do, maybe wouldn't see quite as much on a normal basis. But I feel like God is saying revival. I hear revival. So revival, it starts in our hearts. It starts in our homes and it spills out into our city, into our nation. But again, it starts in our heart and in our home. It starts in the atmosphere of your house. And so if you create an atmosphere of prayer, peace, joy, the presence of God, that will be there. And even when you leave, it will come with you. But adversely, if you create an atmosphere of anxiety or stress or worry, you know, that comes with you too. Like I think about the atmosphere of the beach. 
And so go with me for a second. Like, imagine you're on the beach, the sun is warm, you know, the breeze is cool. You could see the water, you could see the blue sky, you can hear the waves crashing. You know, it's so peaceful. It makes you feel peaceful. And even when you leave, you still feel that calmness coming from the beach. And so imagine being on the beach when it's quiet. It's almost like when you see it, you can see the creation of God. Like, oh man, you, you realize how vast and how big God is to have made something like this. And maybe even how small you are in that, like you feel the presence of God. But we want our homes to be the same way. That when you're in your home, that you can feel the presence of God. You can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit there with you. And so what I want to talk to you about, what I really, really want to get into is the atmosphere of prayer. The atmosphere of prayer. How to create that atmosphere in our homes, with our family, with our roommates, with our children, all of that. Because the atmosphere that you're in, it has an effect on you. Like, for example, is the atmosphere hot? Is it cold? Is it loud? Is it quiet? You know, is there music or is it just stale? Like, who's there with you in the atmosphere? It all has an effect on you. So I want you to use your imagination with me for a moment. And just a side note on your imagination. Your imagination is a gift from God. It's something God gave you so that you could have faith for what you cannot see naturally. You could see it in your mind because if you see it, you can achieve it. But what we can't do is let the devil continue to hijack our imagination to show us perverse and traumatic things. And I feel like that's another thing that played, that kind of turned up in the pandemic as well is the devil hijacking our imagination. So we're no longer seeing the best happen. We're seeing the worst happen. And so you have to take captive every thought. But that's, that's a whole nother lesson. I don't want to go too far on that. But let's use our imagination. Let's go back to the beach. Now, imagine the beach is, it's not sunny, it's cloudy. It's gray skies, it's overcast, it's a little cold. You know, you, the sand is not soft. It has like rocks or like sharp uh, shells in it. It has sticks that are in the sand. The, the water's crashing kind of violently. Like, how do you feel in that moment? You're like, man, I want to go home. I don't want to be here. This isn't the atmosphere that I want. Negative atmosphere can have a negative effect on you. And a positive atmosphere can have a positive effect on you. But the thing is, unlike the beach in your home, you're in control. You're able to control that atmosphere. And if you don't like the current atmosphere you have, it's up to you to change it. And so what I want to do, I want to help give you the tools. Help give you the tools that no matter what the atmosphere is in your home, that you're able to transform it into having God there, you're able to make it into what you want it to be. And even if you're, you're new to alive, you're new to prayer, you're, you're new to church, whatever it is, I believe I'm going to say some things where you can start right where you are, that I'm going to be able to help you today. And so share this with people. You know, if you hear something good on Alive Online, share it with somebody. You know, hit that like button down there at the bottom so other people know that this is good. Like if it's good for you, it would be good for other people like you, other people going through similar things because we all go through the same challenges. You know, if you open up to people, you'd be amazed at how common each of our struggles are and how we can be there to help one another with things that we've either gone through or are currently going through. But where I want to go to help talk to us about atmosphere, there's a story in the Bible. Story in the Bible where two people were building atmosphere. One person, they were building an atmosphere of anxiety, of worry, of like busyness. The other person, they were building an atmosphere of worship, focusing on Jesus. You know, which one would you want? Which atmosphere would you rather be a part of? And so as I ask you that, let's go over to Luke 10 and we're going to hit verses 38 through 42. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Jesus responds, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And so here it is. Jesus, he's with these two people, Mary and Martha. Now, Mary and Martha were both building atmosphere, but they were building it a little differently. You know, Martha, she was distracted by what she thought was important. 
And all those distractions led her to a place of anxiousness and stress. But Mary, according to Jesus, chose what was was better. She was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he had to say. And now, if Jesus came into your house and he was spending time and you're sitting there on your couch, what do you think would be important to him? You think he'd be looking at the feng shui? Would he be like, man, I really love what you've done with the place. Would he be sitting there saying, you know, you could really use an accent wall in this room. It's like, no, he would want to spend time with you. He would want to talk to you. He would want to teach you, to continue to open up your heart to him so that he can open up to you and he can fill you with his peace, his love, and his joy. And so in that, sometimes we put more attention into the things that don't really matter in the atmosphere of our home. Instead of asking ourselves, is the presence of God here? Am I spending time with God in this place? Is this a place where angels would feel welcome if they were here? If Jesus was on the couch, how would he feel in this atmosphere? But we see Martha in this story. Martha is so distracted by what she thinks is important in these preparations that she interrupts Jesus. It's it's that she was distracted by all the preparations. As she comes to Jesus and she says, Lord, Don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Interrupts him. He's in the middle of teaching. And then she tells Jesus what to do. She says, tell her to help me. Now, Martha would speak her mind. And I feel like that's some people right now, that you speak your mind. But know that Jesus, he is not afraid of you speaking your mind. And he teaches us even here how to deal with people that are blunt and that just say whatever they're thinking to us. He answers her in love. Because he can see that she is upset and she is worried. Matter of fact, he calls it out. In verse 41, he says, Martha, Martha. Now I get to see him shaking his head like, Martha, Martha. Lord, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. I feel like in our life, it's easy to feel like Martha, that we're distracted so much by what we think is important. We're distracted by our day. We're distracted by phone calls, text messages, social media, what the kids want, our job, making more money, keeping our friends happy, living up to other people's expectations. But we don't realize that those distractions, they are messing up the atmosphere of our home. They are making us worried, making us anxious, and they are robbing our time to sit at the feet of Jesus because we're running around trying to do everything else make all these preparations, make our life and our atmosphere what we think we need it to be, what it needs to be important to us. And we're taking anxiety and worry everywhere with us. Kind of like that smell on your clothes. Like you just keep taking it with you. But Jesus came to bring peace. If we keep our minds steadfast on the Lord, he keeps us in perfect peace. And this is like sometimes when our feet hit the ground in the morning, like as soon as we get up, we're running, we're cooking, we're cleaning, we're off to work, you know, we're checking email or we're getting up just in time not to be late. You know how you do that snooze button calculation? You know, your your alarm goes off, you're about to hit the snooze button, you start adding up the time in your head like, well, if I snooze for 15 more minutes, I can leave and still be at work on time because it's Thursday and the traffic's going to be light. Not to realize that you are snoozing through your time with God. That more, t- it's better to spend that 15 minutes with the Lord than it is to spend that extra 15 minutes sleeping. That first 15 is a better exchange because almost if we get to a place where we build our life, where we're too busy for God, we also start to unknowingly build this atmosphere of worry and anxiety where we're constantly off to the next thing, where there's an absence of peace in our house. And so let's imagine this. Let's go back to our imagination for a minute. Imagine going to bed at like a decent time and imagine waking up even before your alarm goes off. You know that, now that's good. That's the Lord right there. Where you wake up like two minutes right before your alarm's about to go off and you're like, better luck next time, iPhone. You're not going to get me today. I'm already up. But imagine that and you're waking up refreshed. You're ready for the day and you get to go and spend time with your heavenly father, to spend time with God, setting the atmosphere and making things right. There's a scripture, 1 Peter 5, 7, where it says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That you get to go in the morning and cast your cares to God. That you don't have to carry them around with with you all day, burdening you down and holding you down, constantly thinking, no, you could give it to God and be in faith. 
or Philippians 4, 6, where it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, keyword every, even the small ones, the big ones, the ones you think aren't important to God, if they stand out and they're important to you, he wants you to share them. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Simply pray more, worry less. Don't go through your day weighted and burdened. Give it to God and stand in faith and see how he's going to work even the smallest situations out for you. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell Martha. Like he says, Martha, Martha, you know, when he say your name twice, it's about to be good. He says, you are worried and upset about many things. Only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better. He's telling her and he's telling us, even I think in 2021, that if we are living stressed, if we are living overwhelmed, there's only one thing that is needed. There's only one thing that is important and that's spending time with Jesus. Jesus is saying, come, spending time with the Lord, praying to the Father in the name of Jesus. He's saying, come, come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened and I will give you rest. That's where rest comes from. And that's what Mary's doing. She is there at the feet of Jesus. Now, the atmosphere that Mary is in in this story, it is a lot different from the atmosphere that Martha is in. She has this atmosphere of worship, of praise, of peace. She's listening to the teachings of Jesus. And she's probably going to go help set up. It's not that Martha or that Mary is lazy because she's there with Jesus. It's just she knows what's most important in that moment. It's not every day that Jesus comes to our house that we open up our house to him. I'm going to spend time with him because that is the most important thing. And when we start our day, that is what is most important. It's like God knows your heart. He knows what you want to do, who you want to be, the things that you want to accomplish. It's almost like God is saying, there's going to be time for all that stuff, all that stuff that you want to accomplish, but don't put it before me. Don't put me behind your own desires. Don't put me behind how you want to start your day or what you want to get done or accomplish in that moment. There's a scripture that talks about seeking first the kingdom of God. Seeking first. And then it says, all these other things that you worry about will be added unto you. Seeking first, seeking the kingdom more than you seek approval, more than you seek social media likes, more than you seek a career, more than you seek six figures, more than you seek that next contract or making the team or that scholarship. He's saying, no, seek first the kingdom. Seek me first. I'll make everything else make sense after that. And so we can learn a lot from this, this story on how to create atmosphere in our home. Mary and Martha and, and Jesus, they can teach us a lot about what to do even now today, 2021. And so I want to give you some very practical steps on how to build atmosphere. And these are things that I learned that helped me. Because I remember when I was new to church, I was new to making this atmosphere that included the Holy Spirit, that included God. And so I felt like I had to start from scratch. And so if that's you, that's okay. You're in a good place and you're in the right place. It's like your atmosphere might be tough. It might be anxious. A lot of things might be going on that you don't like, but, but know that you can change it today you can make something different today. I remember a big part of what I started to do, I was just taking baby steps. I remember I decided, okay, no cussing on Sunday. Because your words, they change your atmosphere. And then I said, I said okay, well, no cussing music on, on Sunday. And then eventually I, I took a full adult step and I cut it out all together. Because I know I didn't, not only did I not need it on Sunday, as if there was something special about the atmosphere that would be different the other days, I know I didn't need it at all. And so I had to cut it completely out of my life. And I remember I would get up in the morning and I didn't always want to pray. You know, I felt like playing video games. I felt like turning the TV on. I had to make a constant and daily choice to put God first. And quite honestly, that's still something. Like I get up in the morning, there are things that my flesh wants to do that do not include praying. I want to jump right into my day. I'm anxious about what I need to do, what I need to accomplish. And I have to slow down and spend time with God first. I have to give him what to do to him. I have to set that atmosphere of my home. And I constantly need to keep it there. And I remember when we got married, Renika and I, we started looking to build this atmosphere together. You know, even in our first year, we would argue some. Arguing would, would turn into yelling at some times. But I realized then the Holy Spirit convicted me that that was disrupting my atmosphere. And so for my married couples, like you dwelling together in unity, 
that has a lot to do with your atmosphere. You know, putting those negative words and, and speaking negatively to each other, it negatively infects not just your marriage, but even your home, your children, everything else around you. But I want to give you some things, again, that are really going to help you, that are going to help lay it out, make it practical, and make it clear. And so there's three things from this story that I want you to remember, and they're like three steps. And so it's invite, remove, choose. I'm going to say it again because I really want to stick to you. Invite, remove, choose. Invite, remove, choose. So invite. Invite Jesus into your home. That is the first step. And we see that's what Mary and Martha did. The scripture says, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. The presence of the Lord is what makes the difference in your atmosphere. It makes a difference in the vibe of your home. And so you have to invite God in. How do you do that? You have to make prayer a common practice in your home. Make it a common practice. Like my wife and I have done praying over our children. You know, you have to come to a place where you're going to have a set prayer time. Whether it's the first 15, first 30 minutes of your day, first hour, whatever it is. The first 15, I want to break it down because that's like a part of our culture here at Alive. And so what that means, it's five minutes of worship, five minutes of reading the Bible, doing the devotional, and then five minutes of prayer. And so make that common practice for you that, hey, I'm going to get up 15 minutes earlier, earlier than I normally would have because I want to spend time with God. But not just that, like pray over your food together. When you sit down for dinner or in the morning when you're going to eat breakfast, pray together as a family, pray with your roommates, whatever that looks like for you. Pray over the people you live with. Make that common. Make that a comfortable thing. Praying over your kids. Your kid's not feeling well. Pray over them. They're getting ready to go to sleep. Pray over them. They're leaving for school in the morning. Pray. My wife and I, we pray together every day before I leave the house. And we do that to make an atmosphere throughout our day and an atmosphere in our home. Another thing you can do is more directly pray over your home. Pray directly over the atmosphere of your house. Ask the presence of God to rest in your house. You know, there's a scripture that talks about where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In other words, there is freedom. And that times of refreshing in the book of Acts says, times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. So you can pray for freedom. You can pray for refreshing to be part of the atmosphere of your home. But when you invite Jesus in, there's also some things that you don't do. Some things that just won't fit anymore. And like I said, a little bit of my story, yelling and fighting and cursing, all that stuff, it has to go. Because when you start doing that, it messes up your atmosphere. Like, have you ever been to somebody's house and they've invited you over and then they start arguing and cussing and yelling at each other and you're a guest in their home in the midst of all this? How uncomfortable does that make you feel? And so if you're going to invite the presence of God into your home, you want to honor that presence. You want to honor it with your words, honor it with your actions. Because if, if you have an atmosphere like that, I just want to speak to you for a minute where there's a lot of conflict, unhealthy conflict, where there's a lot of fighting. You know, I would encourage you, if you've identified yourself as that person that sparks this conflict, to repent to God. And to repent, I mean to say, like, God, I'm sorry, and to make a conscious choice in your mind to be different. That I'm going to turn from that, Lord, help me turn from those ways and turn to your ways. Help, help me understand how a soft answer turns away wrath. Help me understand how I can have a better vocabulary than just to say negative things or to put people down. Forgive me, help me be better. And practically, think about what triggers you. When you feel yourself going to that place, you're like, oh, I'm getting ready to be upset. Like, I feel myself getting mad. In that moment, pray to God. Ask him to give you peace. Ask him for help. Even if it's just you can only get out three Simple words, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. God, help me. God, give me peace. Bring your presence into this place. And so the beginning of my marriage in our first year, I said we would get into this arguing. And there were things that I had to do and that my wife had to do in order to be better. And so no matter where you are, you're always able to take some steps to be better. No matter where your marriage is, God always wants, you to bring, always wants to bring you to a better place. And so I realized that there were places I could not go emotionally. When I felt myself going there when we were talking, I knew I had to slow down. I had to stop. Because at a certain emotional point, the conversation is no longer productive. You know, when you start losing control of your tone, your volume, start losing control of what you're saying, it's better just to say nothing at all. Because you're probably going to say something you have to take back and you can't pull words out of the atmosphere and put them back once you've said them. So you're better just to slow down, 
to focus on God in that moment and he will keep you in perfect peace. But one last thing, we also started praying before hard conversations. If there was something we knew was going to get a little heated, be a little tense, we would pray first. And so I would encourage you to do that. If you're looking to change the atmosphere of your home, but you're consistently jumping into this this atmosphere of conflict or of turmoil around you, let's pray more. Let's make prayer a common practice in your house. But one thing you need to do, you have to guard the atmosphere of your home. Guard the atmosphere of your home. That's the next thing. That certain things you can't allow in. You know, you have doors, you have windows, you have locks in your house. And the purpose of those is to let the things you want in and to keep certain things out. But know as a gatekeeper of your house, a gatekeeper of that atmosphere, you have the same right. And so one thing we should always keep out of our atmosphere, keep out of our home is sin. You know, sin breaks fellowship with God. The presence of God does not want to be in the presence of sin. And sin is, it's missing the mark. It's falling short of being obedient to God. And we usually identify that first by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, where you feel like God is telling you like, no, that's wrong. No, you should stop doing that. And sometimes we get to the place where we try to rationalize why it's okay to continue doing. But as believers, as children of God, we have to be able to identify sin and rule it out. You have to call it out. Let the Holy Spirit be the umpire of your life. No, that's out. That's out of my atmosphere. That's out of my home. That's out of my life. Because you are that gatekeeper. And so certain things in my house, we don't watch on TV. Certain video games, we don't play. And so you have to understand that pornography, vulgar language, all of these things that represent sin or just negativity, they affect the atmosphere of your home. And by way of affecting that atmosphere, they affect you, they affect your family, they affect your roommates. But we can make an atmosphere of peace, of love, of the presence of God in a humble way. The next thing is remove. So invite, remove, choose. I'm going to get to remove. It's remove the distractions. Remove the distractions. And this is more so for your personal prayer time. And so you want to have the right atmosphere and remove the distractions that could possibly mess you up. And so you want to find a place. Pastor Ken talked about this in a, a few weeks ago, finding a place, sanctifying a place. And you want to, for me, example, it started off, I had this kind of similar story of Pastor Ken. Like I'd, I'd pray in the room before I got married. You know, I had my own room to myself. I'd pray there, you know, and then I, I get married. I had an office room that I would pray in. And then my wife, she took that. And sometimes she prays in the closet. I don't pray there. So right now, where do I pray? I pray on the couch, in the living room, on the couch. I got one particular seat. I sit there, I pray and I have time with God. But in order to do that, I have to get up early. Like I'm up early. I'm the first one up before everybody else. Sometimes 5.30, 6 o'clock, I'm up and I'm there and I'm praying. And so you have to find a place without distractions. And for a lot of us, that means getting up early. That means being the first one up in your house if you have to. Because people can be a distraction. You know, even work could be a distraction. If If you're getting up and your phone is next to you and it's going off and going crazy, that can mess you up. If you're constantly having to check the clock, because you've gotten up late and you don't want to be late for work, that could be a distraction. So you need to just get up early. But the biggest thing is people. And I got to say, I'm guilty of this. I remember one time I ruined my wife's atmosphere while she was praying. She was playing her favorite song, right? And I just so happened to like the song too. And now I know the words. So I start singing the words. Now I can't sing at all. They never let me on the worship team. I've I've tried out numerous times. Not really, but I feel like they would just tell me no. But I'm, I'm singing and she turns like, can you please stop? Can you please stop? So everybody had that happen where your favorite song comes on and somebody else is singing it. Like you almost want to ask them, who sings that song? Oh, Michael Jackson. Let him sing it then. You stop singing it. Let him sing it. And so you want to get to a place where you can just spend time just with you and God. Stay away from phone. Stay away from email, text. You know, don't make social media the first thing you do when you get up in the morning. Sometimes we check social media like we're checking the newspaper. Like I'm guilty of that too. We just want to see what's going on in other people's lives. Don't turn on the TV and start checking the news. You're like, oh, I want to know what to pray about. No, no, the Lord is going to give you what to pray about. All that stuff can be a distraction. It can pull you to a place where you're not able to fully focus on God. Don't start cooking. Don't start cleaning in the beginning of the day. No, let's spend time with the Lord. But the last one I want to get into is choose. Is choose. Choose the better thing. Choose the better thing. I know when Martha interrupted Jesus, she said, Jesus told her that Mary chose what was better. And so that tells us there's going to be an option. There's going to be a choice that we have to make. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus as opposed to running around just being busy. 
And so it's a daily choice that when you're building, you're maintaining, and you're protecting this atmosphere, it's a daily choice that you're going to have to make. Choose the better thing. You have to ask yourself, does this take me closer to God or take me further away? Because you're going to be tempted to settle back into your old habits, to slip back into what you were doing before. And if you find yourself, you've, you've missed a day, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad on yourself. God's not going to leave you if you miss a day of prayer because things came up. Just try to get back on track. You know, some of us, we used to pray and maybe it's, it's been a long time. It's all right. God's not going to shun you for being gone for a while. He'll be happy that you're back to your normal regimen of spending time with him. And so you're going to need to prioritize your time and prioritize your atmosphere. You're going to have to make constant choices. Some things you can't do. Like in my house, I said, oh, some things we won't watch. Some people you may not be able to have over as frequently or any longer, depending on how that person affects your atmosphere and what that relationship represents in your life. Is something that brings you closer to God or further away. You have to protect your atmosphere. Seek first the kingdom of God. And so having a prayer life, it's going to take some choice. It's going to take some planning. You know, you can't be out all night, wake up late and expect to be anointed. Expect to have that same peace and stuff that comes from the spending time in the presence of God is a choice that you have to make to choose God, to structure your day that you have time to spend with the Lord. When you pack too many things into your day, you start to build this anxiety and this worry. And so for some of us, we need to go through our calendar and choose what's better. Ask the Holy Spirit, ask God, lead me to what I need to cut off and what I need to start doing more of, less of and more of. And so when you're spending time with God, when you're creating that atmosphere with him, I believe you're going to see the positive effects in your home, in your family, in your own mental health. There's so much that the Lord is going to be able to speak to you because of an atmosphere of prayer that is in your house continually. And you're going to take that atmosphere with you even to work, into the car, hanging out with your friends. Everywhere that you go, you're going to be able to realize and notice and acknowledge the presence of God. And I believe that's what's going to make a difference for you in your life. And so where a lot of this starts for us, and so if you're, if you're here and you're, you're watching a live online for the first time and you, know, you don't have a relationship with God, it's an invite for you. Inviting God, not just into your home, but into your heart. Accepting the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross when he died for the forgiveness of your sins future, past, present. He died for all of our sins. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And he simply says that we need to receive him. The Bible talks about Romans 10 verse 9, that if we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's the will of God that none would be lost, but that all would be saved. All would come to the knowledge of the Son of God. And so I want to give you that opportunity, that opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And what it is, it's a prayer and it's a belief. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. And so if you could please repeat after me, if you want to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord God, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you said that prayer, we believe that you got saved that your, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Your name is written in heaven. You have this beginning and this start of this relationship with God where you, your spirit is made alive. Jesus now lives on the inside of you. But this is just the beginning. Get involved, get plugged into this church. Head over to our Facebook group. Be a part of this Alive Church community. You can text the word SAVE to the number at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to walk this journey with you. This journey of helping you become all that God has created and called you to be. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Alive Online today. I pray that message was a blessing to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit just takes something from it. And he illuminates it to where your life will never be the same again. If that's the case, make sure you let us know how your life was impacted and changed because of the message on today. We would love for you to share this content. You know, we have a saying in Alive Church that one invite can change a life. We also believe that one share 
can change a life. I mean, get your share on. God will use your share as a lifeline to reach people around the world. All right, if you like what we're doing here, we would love for you to be a part of our online family. You can do that by hitting subscribe. We want you to be the first to grab hold of all new messages and all new content as they are released. You know, the Bible says that when we give, it'll be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And one of the greatest ways that you can make a difference and change lives is by giving. And so if you would like to sow to the ministry of Alive Church, hit the button below. And I know that God will bless you and you'll also be a blessing to other people. We love you and we'll see you real soon. God bless you.